Good day everyone. So I am Karen Roshubi from Doctor of Veterinary Medicine 2-1. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about the checklist for the technical report. So in the case of technical presentations, writing technically must be for a specific reading public for a specific purpose. The discourse organization of written technical reports can be explained through three interlinked axes, the setting, the strategy, and the structure. Starting for the first axis, the setting, it is the non-linguistic context that envelops a written technical report with its focus the external circumstances that frame a piece of written discourse. It refers to con contextual components such as place, participants, assumptions, and purposes. Now let's move to the next uh, axis, which is the strategy. It is the vertical axis of choice. With its focus on strategy, it foregrounds the, the tactical nature of written technical reports since it concerns the selection of an appropriate organizing principle of dramatic shape to highlight topics, present information, and develop arguments. And for the last axis, which is the structure, it is the horizontal axis of chain. It provides a neat way of conceptualizing how these course units are combined and build up to form the different sections and moves into which written technical reports can be divided. The structural axis accounts for the linear progression of this course at two levels, the macrostructure and the microstructure. Macrostructure involves the discourse discourse sections into which the written technical report may be divided, while microstructure which comprises the discourse or rhetorical movements within each sections. So to further understand the three interlinked axes, which are the setting, strategy, and structure, I will talk about them one by one. Starting with the setting, it is when planning the content of a written technical report. It is advisable to think about the setting or the external circumstances that envelop your report. So a while ago, I would mentioned the six elements of the setting, which is the place, participants, writers, reading, reading publics, and the action, the type of action. So the place in which the written technical report may be presented or published. The second, the, participa the participant that might be involved. For instance, the writer and the specific reading public. Third is the writer's specific objective and motivation when writing the report. Fifth, fourth is the reading public's specific, sport, specific purpose when, re when reading. And last, the type of action by reading public that might be expected, if any. So the external variables listed above or listed in the last slide are also interlinked. For example, who your readers will depend on when on where your report will appear. In this respect, a manuscript may take the following forms. It can be a professional journal, a trade magazine, a paper of engineering conference, an external report done by your organization, or a thesis for an academic degree. So, knowing the potential reading public will be a critical determinant in choosing the right purpose because there are three types of purpose. It can be an informative, instructional, or persuasive. When we say informative purpose, this is the main purpose of many written technical reports, which gives the reading public information or facts. For example, to describe a device, a process, method, or system to analyze a problem, or to develop a theory. Now, what about instructional purpose? These are written technical reports can be primarily instructional. Your task might be to instruct new employees to use new equipment or to perform certain written tasks. Now, what about persuasive purpose? These are the written technical report that can be primarily persuasive. For example, you might want to convince your reading public to support a particular program. Once you know your specific audience and specific purpose, you will know what to expect from them. So, they can research, buy, or modify. The writer's purpose is to make the audience do some research on the types of information needed for a specific purpose. Now, your readers can buy too. The writer's purpose is to make the audience buy a particular working device, system, or a product. Now, they will modify your product. The speaker's purpose is to promote change in the use or construction of sound system or device for a variety of reasons, for instance, the efficiency, reliability, and safety. 
Now, in order to match your objectives with the reader's interest, you should distinguish between your objectives, the purpose of the work, and your motivation for writing the report. Some objectives may be to develop a new theory, to apply known principles in practice, to solve an engineering problem in a device, system, etc., to design a new structural reform, to develop a new or improved method, or to establish a set of standards. Whereas, some motivation for writing may be to become known for your work, to be published in a prestigious journal, to attend a conference and publish your paper in the proceedings, to make an in-company in progress report on your engineering public, to describe for tutorial purposes certain engineering developments or principles, or to satisfy requirements for an academic degree. Now let's move to the second axis, which is the strategy. Plan the strategy or organizing principle that may give a dramatic shape to your technical report. You may wish to follow the stages listed below to define your strategic approach to the content of your written report. First, match your objectives and motivation with the structure and contents of your written report. Second, match your objective with a suitable strategic plan to give shape to the contents of your written report. So, there are some stages in, in constructing the report strategically. First, make a plan, orient the reader, choose the right amount of detail, show the overall significance, emphasize the strong points, and get peer reviews. Now, for the third axis, which is the structure, once you have decided on a strategic approach to presenting the contents in your written report, you still need a structure to link your concepts. First, plan and organize your report. Make, an, make a rough outline. An outline shows the intended structure of the paper and where the emphasis lies. When we say topic outline, it consists the title of the main sections, subheadings, sub-subheadings while the sentence outline consists of theme sentences for sections and paragraphs. Here are some guidelines to organize ideas in making your rough outline. What are the main ideas? What are the supporting ideas? What details should be inc included? What is the emphasis on? Can be the data, the method, your recommendations, a new application or design, etc. How long should be the manuscript be? What information should be included in the main illustrations and tables of data? What information should be relegated to an appendix? Now, for general draft guidelines, use complete sentences to form coherent paragraphs containing related ideas, preferably one idea per paragraph. Separate paragraphs by leaving a line space between them or indenting the first line of each. If a line space is used, indentation may be reserved for presenting lists formulas, etc. Pay special attention to the first sentence of each paragraph, such as the topic sentences. The last sentence of each paragraph should round off the idea in the paragraph and link it to the next paragraph. Don't make your paragraphs too long. A typical paragraph would consist of 4 to 8 sentences. However, paragraphs of only 1 or 2 lines may be used to focus the reader's attention. Include all the information you wish to transmit in a way that indicates a logical flow of ideas and continuity. Now, here are the following points to consider. The clarity, readability, conciseness, and technical language. For the clarity, it answers this question. Does it convey the message you want it to convey? Or is, is it ambiguous in any way? Or what conclusions might the reader draw? For the readability, here are some grammar guidelines. Use logical connectives. Second, avoid using very long, complex sentences with multiple clauses. Third, use technical terminology consistently. Fourth, define your terms. And last, don't overdo the use of nouns. Uh, another is use verbs for actions or activities. For example, Calculation the parameters was done. Instead of that, we can use the parameters were the parameters were calculated. So use the correct grammatical time frame. Instead of a, pre a preliminary study was done, we can use the patient had been operated on previously. Next is something that is valid now. For instance, linozeloid used to treat infections including pneumonia and infections of the disease. 
Nilzol lead is in a class of antibacterial called oxazolidinose. So, we can say it as linezoloid inhibits the growth of microorganisms. For number 9, something that began in the past and continues into the present is expressed using the present perfect tense. Present perfect participle. It is the subject plus have or has plus past participle. For instance, the system has been shown to the most effective. For number 10, avoid vague sub superlatives such as extremely high diffraction efficiency. Number 11, use specific figures if possible. A diffraction efficiency of less than 99%. 12. Avoid redundant. Example, the very best, you can say it the best, or the most optimal, or we can say it the optimal. Now, for the conciseness, it should not be confused with brevity. And for the technical language, the author of a formal written report must consider what is appropriate for the readers. Now, let's move for the structure. I For the next guidelines for making the structure it is the layout of the written technical report the, the discourse structure of written technical reports consists of the following sections and rhetorical moves identification abstract table of contents introduction body of paper so it can be it can put it there the result or the discussion conclusion contains the summary conclusions and recommendation and the acknowledgement and the reference for identification, you can see there the title, place or origin of the work, name of the authors, and the date. For the abstract, it describes in a, nut in a nutshell the main findings and significance of the work. It includes essential formation. Here are three types of abstract. Indicative type, informative abstract, and informative indicative abstract. Here are the rough guide in creating your abstract. For short communication, contains 100 words. For journal article, it contains 250 words. And for the dissertation, it contains 500 words. Here are some essential characteristics of an abstract. It should be complete. It has, it has the characteristic of completeness, precision, objectivity, clarity, and brevity. For rhetorical modes of an informative or informative indicative abstract, a concise statement of the engineering problem, if possible, in a single sentence. Or an explanation of your approach to solving the problem. Third, the principal result, result such as theoretical or experimental finding, new improved design, recommended course of action, etc. And for the table of contents, it shows the reader where the various sections of the report are located. It is written on a separate page. It includes the page numbers of each section with the report and any appendices that are attached to the report. It does not include the title page, abstract, or executive summary. These sections are attached to the report before the table of contents page. These are the examples. Now let's move to the introduction. It includes the following rhetorical moves, which are the purpose of the manuscript, definition of the problem, brief historical review, reference to previous work in the same field, Scope of the manuscript, brief indication of the technical contents to follow. And for the body, the body of the paper may consist of the following rhetorical moves. The result, discussion, and recommendation. And for the results, it describes the most significant findings of your work or study. It may be broken down into subsections, identified by clear and, sub and short subheadings, to make it easier for the reader to assimilate the information. And use short, simple sentences in the past tense and passive voice and avoid the use of the personal pronoun I. You can express the results through interrelated results and functional relationships. Example, column bar graph, 3D bar graphs, 3-axis bar graphs, uh, stack bar graphs, pictograms, and dot bar graphs. Now for concluding, the concluding section may consist of the following moves, summarizing, conclusions, recommendations, sections. For summarizing, a standard way of concluding a descriptive or tutorial is to summarize the main points. It should give more information than does an abstract or introduction, but should be discriminating and clarifying. Unnecessary details should be eliminated and your results brought into the 
proper perspective, make your summary brief but strong. And for conclusions, in this section points out the significant and why the results are valid. It could even mention some negative aspects to make your paper more convincing as well as pointing out direction for future work and application. And for recommendation sections, a recommendation section is the ideal way to conclude. Your recommendation should be concise, clear-cut, and based on your findings. Avoid qualifying statements. And for the acknowledgement, in this section, it expresses gratitude to people and institutions that help in your work. For the references, you can list all the sources. This section pro proves the evidence dramatically. There are two types of, pre of referencing, reference list and bibliography. Now let's move to the lecture 3 style of writing. Technical writing should be concise, precise, direct, and well-organized. When we say concise, it should not be vague or hedging language. Uh, there's no redundancy and word phrases. For example, instead of keep this information on file for future references, we can say file this information and so, so on. For precise, precise writing will generally meet the following criteria. Should be statements are verifiable, statements are specific and meaningful, descriptors are quantified whenever possible, word choice accurately represents the level of certainty. Direct. Use vocabulary that is right for the situation and doesn't use fancy or flowery words in attempt to sound smart or impressive. Here are some examples of flowery language and more direct replacement. Instead of ascertain, you should use determine or learn. Instead of terminate, use end, utilize, use use, and the verb use try, here in, here, procure, get, rendered inoperative, failed. Additional practical ways to ensure directness in technical and professional writing clearly state the purpose and scope of a document or communication at the start, get to the point quickly, put the most important information near the beginning. Use concise, meaningful subject lines for professional emails. Include specific keywords and indicate the purpose of the communication. Well organized. Some practical ways to make a document clearly well organized. Outline the document. Use an advanced organizer. Divide longer documents with headings and subheadings. Use transition words and phrases. Use simple direct topic sentences. Useful transition words and phrases. Also, first, second, third, in addition to, moreover, as a result, and so, therefore, because, as a consequence, similarly, likewise, in the same way, however, yet, still, otherwise, on the other hand, on the contrary, nevertheless, notwithstanding, for instance, for example, specifically, in fact, in other words, and finally, in conclusion, in closing.